the high seas, high seas. Cast my line, now they're biting. Rocky coast and lighthouses, what she knows now I doubt it. Talk to me nice. I think your confusion starts with street lights. Hey guys, welcome to your Aries slash Taurus season videos. I've got the red theme going on here right now to honor the fire in our universe this month. So I wanted to record a little bit of an intro video like I do every month for those of you who appreciate the astro uh, astrological information. So I've got my notes here. We have a lot going on in April, you guys. The readings are cool. They're, I've, only, I've only done a few, um, half of the Zodiac Wheel, so I still have Libra through Pisces to do. But by the time you guys watch this, all of them will be finished. So... Whew, yeah, definitely a lot of messages coming out here in April, guys. The readings so far have been kind of kind of lit. They've been kind of interesting. I'm enjoying these Aries season readings. So we're going to talk a little bit about what's going on here in April, astrological-wise, and then we'll get going on your tarot video. So Mercury goes direct on the 15th, which is tomorrow, yes! So by the time most of you watch this video, Mercury will be direct in some of the crazy problems and inconveniences and challenges and obstacles that we've been having mentally will kind of slow down a bit, okay? Um, we are going to have a shadow period. Mercury always goes into shadow period two weeks before it goes retrograde and two weeks after. So, you know, we're not going to be quite completely in the clear of this energy until the end of April. But, you know, that energy is slowing down and the mental energy is going to pick back up with Mercury going back direct on the 15th. Now, on that same day, we have the Aries New Moon. So I am I have an Aries New Moon video that I'm going to upload on tomorrow on the 15th as well. So, you know, that's definitely a time to set new intentions, you guys. This whole Aries season is all about self. This is the first house, you guys. So last month, we really did close a lot of chapters out with the Pisces 12th house energy, a lot of spiritual subconscious releasing. And now we're at the astrological new year. Happy spring. This is definitely, definitely the start of 2018. The, the real, the real 2018, the one that's going to go down in history. Okay, some of the real actual shit is about to, t to take off here in April. So we did enter the month with a full moon. How was the Libra full moon for you guys? That was a very beautiful, significant, life-changing, beautiful moon for me. The Libra full moon, it really did restore balance. This is the opposite sign of Aries. It restored a lot of balance in our universe because Libra controls an alternate universe where everything's opposite. The first house is Libra instead of Aries. The second house is Taurus, and, I mean Scorpio instead of Taurus. Third house is Sagittarius instead of Gemini. So you see how the the signs are kind of opposite there so we entered the month under the full moon and libra energy you know um so moving on here with uh the planets we have chiron entering aries on the 17th now you know this is going to be interesting i am going to have a chiron video for all 12 signs about you know what this is going to mean this is the wounded healer chiron you might want to do your own research about chiron but he is a wounded healer. You know, he is the shaman of healing. So wherever Chiron is in the universe or wherever it, he is in your natal chart, you can, you know, that's where your pain is. That's where your unhealed wounds are, unresolved wounds, okay? So there's going to be a flushing of wounds that take place. Now, for Chiron to be exiting Pisces, we've had Chiron in Pisces for a long time, you guys. I'm going to talk about this more in a separate video. But I do feel the need to mention it because it's happening in April. It's going to move into Aries, which means healing. Our pain and our healing is going to its going to be a new cycle, first of all, because anytime anything moves from Pisces to Aries, it's reborn completely because it's going from 12 to 1, from finished to start. So that's a door closed and another door open. So this is a new cycle of pain. We have all completed a certain cycle of pain in our life in different areas. So this is going to be pain in a different area, you guys. This is going to be, collectively, it's it's self-pain. Aries rules self, so Aries handles pain a lot different than Pisces. So, you know, Aries is not one to really be lay down and take defeat. So this is going to be a completely different energy with Chiron, okay? And I'm going to talk about that in a different video, but, you know, it's just a little bit of a heads up this month if you want to research Chiron and Aries. You can gain kind of your own perspective about that until I come out with the videos um, later on in the month. 
So we do have that happening on the 17th. Also on the 17th, we have Saturn retrograde. I am going to have videos about that too. I'm probably going to do those before I do the Chiron videos because Saturn is retrograding on April 17th until September 6th. So that's a long chunk of time there for the planet of restriction, the planet of limitations and boundaries and the Lord of Karma. Like this is going to be very interesting to kind of channel some stuff about that. I believe this is literally us time traveling because Saturn rules time. So this is us time traveling back into, you know, this is us slowing down, karma slowing down, a lot of different changes here. That Saturn retrograde is going to be the starting point to a lot of different changes in our life. And so is the Aries new moon on the 15th. You're going to see things pick up on, in mid-April, okay? It's been really confusing beginning of April, end of March. It's been kind of here nor there, but the energy is really going to start picking up with this, this energy when Taurus season begins, which is on the 19th. Uh, late at night, basically the 20th, the sun is going to enter Taurus. All this fiery energy, all this passionate, um, basically uh, on fire energy, all this fire, passionate energy, it's going to ground itself in Taurus. And, you know, Taurus is a more realistically, earthly grounded, um, logical sign. And it's a little bit more patient. But this, you're going to literally feel this energy really ground itself. Taurus is going to give this energy kind of some land to land on, you know what I mean? So we're going to see the energy kind of shift after the 19th. And then we're going to end the month with a little bit of energy here. We have Pluto retrograde on the set, the 22nd. So guys, Jupiter's retrograde. Uh, Jupiter's going to be retrograde. Saturn's going to be retrograde. Pluto's going to be retrograde. So... That is three planets retrograde. So that's three different areas in our life that is the universe is trying to tell us something about the past. The universe is trying to tell us to slow down a bit. So Saturn rules karma, Pluto rules the underworld, and Jupiter rules expansion. So as far as our expansion, we're being asked to look at that in a little bit of a different way this month. We're being asked to slow down a little bit and not overexpand, not expand beyond our true path. Pluto is going to purify a lot of things. Pluto is going to retrograde back to our past to purify anything that no longer serves us. This is Scorpio's ruling planet. So this is transformation, death, and rebirth. Okay, so we do have all those planets retrograde. I might have a video come out for that. I'm not sure, guys. I might briefly talk about it. Seems interesting, though. So let me know if you want me to do a video about that, and I will. But I for sure will do one about Saturn. And I'm for sure going to do one about Chiron. And so moving on, after the 22nd, we have a couple days later on the 24th, we have Venus in Gemini moving into Gemini. First half of the month, Venus is in Taurus. Okay, so that's really good. Venus is ruled, Taurus is ruled by Venus. So that's really bringing the value and the abundance back to our relationships, bringing the abundance to, you know, our, our values and our personal resources. This is going to take a shift to the third house. So this is adding abundance to our short distance travels. This is adding abundance to our communication. Now, Gemini is the lovers. So I think this is interesting to have Venus, the ruling planet of love and the goddess of love, entering the sign of the lovers. So this is going to be really, really magical, really, really magical for soulmates and twin flames, karmic partners. A lot of us are going to be really finally meeting around this, this Gemini transit with Venus, okay? So, you know, that's an air sign, bringing it... A, a more intellectual vibe to Venus communication you know so you guys if you want to follow me on Instagram or if you want to add me on Facebook I'll have all my information in the description box because I am um, for every full moon and every new moon every time something significant happens in the astrological sky I always uh, put out a, a, a post about it so I'm gonna be posting about all this stuff um, it's going to be words, though. You know, I don't really have videos uh, except for on my YouTube. So this is if you want a more written response. I also, every Tuesday, every Tuesday I have um, a tarot card that I pull for the week. So if you want to follow me there and just kind of hang out, that's a way to contact me and just kind of keep in touch with me a little bit more. Oh, do you hear that wind? The wind has just been blowing so hard, man. This is the opposite. Inner, air is the opposite of fire. So we need air and oxygen to ignite this Aries new moon tonight and tomorrow. So this energy is on, you guys. And so I don't want to forget to mention here that at the end of the month, we have a beautiful full moon in Scorpio. So we are all going through 
a soul transformation. With the moon going full in Scorpio in Taurus season, we're definitely going to be going through some death and rebirth with Pluto going retrograde, Scorpio's ruling planet. And then Scorpio full moons are some of my favorite full moons. I have a Scorpio north node and a Scorpio midheaven. So I am very, very looking forward to this beautiful energy. You know, this is the eighth house, you guys. This is the house that is traditionally hidden. So a lot of light shedding on our secret, intimate thoughts and feelings. You know, this is a water energy. So definitely want to look out for that Scorpio full moon. I'm going to have a video talking about that where I pull some, uh, cards for all 12 zodiac signs. I'm going to pull um, a tarot card message for all the signs for the full moon in Scorpio. So yeah, guys, a lot to look forward to in April. Um, I hope you enjoy your readings. They're they're pretty nice. Um, this month, Scorpio and Virgo got the giveaway. So Virgo had more than 5,000 likes on my last video. Thank you so much, all of you, really. And also, I can't forget to mention that, oh my God, I have over a 1,000 subscribers now. So I, I know that's not like super a lot, but this is the beginning of my journey. And oh my God, it means so much to me that there are over a 1,000 people over in the world throughout the world that care about my videos every month and i hope to gain even more subscribers this month i love connecting with you guys this is a passion of mine so when i sit down every month to record and talk about all these astrological events it truly gives me joy it truly gives me passion it makes me happy so you know and i've done i've done a handful of private readings so far so for any of you who have gotten a private reading with me and for any of you who have donated to my channel and who, who have got the the bray beads thank you so much for supporting my pisces shenanigans i get these ideas and you know, mostly I think that they're just illusions and fantasies, but then you guys make it real for me. You make it real. And it's just, I'm humbled. I'm humbled and I'm so blessed. And, you know, I have all my information below. If you'd like to talk to me on a more personal level, you can schedule. I work with PayPal. I'm very, very cheap. You know, $20 for an hour-long tarot reading. I would love, but only if you feel led to. I believe that only those who feel led to contact me actually reach out you know I, I pray every day that the right people see my videos so I just appreciate your guys's likes and subscribe so much and your comments and just all of the ways that we connect it, it just means so much and you know as far as this month goes with the readings you guys I am getting um a one I'm getting a card it's a, a whole tarot spread I'm just kind of letting whatever comes out come out but I am getting one card to sim symbolize ourself so I'm getting a card to overlook the rest of the reading and this this card because Aries rules self So I thought it would be a really good idea to kind of get a card to best represent our energy this month All of the signs are embodying a different energy of self So I am getting a card to represent you and who you are and then we get kind of different messages there to kind of relate to that So that's all about the reading you guys as I mentioned Virgo and uh, Scorpio they're getting extra cards this month so make sure you view and like and share with your friends and on your social media so that maybe your sign I think what I'm gonna do from now on is I'm gonna give extra cards to those to whatever two signs the one sign that views me the most and the sign that likes my video the most so whatever sign has the most likes and the most views they're gonna get extra time my videos are all really long this month but I'm not really this month but usually they're about an hour long when you um consider the intro video as well so yeah, I'm probably gonna give an extra 10 minutes to, next month I'm gonna give an extra 10 minutes to those, to whatever two signs have the most likes and the most views. So share and like and subscribe you guys. And also I'm gonna have extra giveaways and stuff like that. Um, just lots of stuff happening in April. April is just, oh, I feel the energy. So happy spring, you guys. It's it, The weather is getting nicer, not really today, but the, the sun is getting stronger and brighter and warmer. So I wish you guys all a happy spring, a happy April, happy birthday to the Aries and the Tauruses that have April birthdays. Shout out to all of you watching my videos, all of you. It means so much. And I hope you enjoy your readings. Okay, see you in the next video. Hi, Sagittarius. Welcome to your April reading with me. Now, I covered a lot of the astrology happening this month in the intro video, so I really want to take the time here to use as much time as we can today just to talk about the tarot. So if you're interested in the astrological energy, there may be a message there for you at the beginning of the video if you fast forwarded. 
But we do have a little bit to mention as far as energy goes. I do feel the need to mention the Aries new moon happening. That happened on the 15th. Now, Aries is your is your fifth house, you guys. So Aries is another fire energy, right? You're a mutable sign, Sagittarius. Aries is a cardinal sign, so it's a little different um, fire, but, you know, you understand these fire energies. I mean, we have your card here, and we have the fire triangle right in the middle. This is the Archangel Michael, and this is your ruling card. So definitely fire. We have those wings, very fiery. And underneath you, I do feel the need to mention that we have the hanged man. So there's something that the universe is already telling you to see differently. And then we have the five of cups under that. So there could be some kind of happy, sad situation, something something in the past that fell apart that you're being asked to look at differently in April, Sagittarius, in a new beginning with the lovers. So definitely a new beginning in love happening for you in April or starting to happen for you in April. As I shuffled your cards, could be a third party situation too, Sag, because we have the lovers and the three of pentacles. So um, I did shuffle your cards and we I seen the lovers card a bunch. So I'm like, wow, there's definitely something with Gemini energy. Now, Venus moves into Gemini this month. So that's going to be your seventh house, Sagittarius. And when v Venus is comfortable in the seventh house, uh, Venus rules the seventh house she rules libra and taurus so she's comfortable in the second house and she's comfortable in the se excuse me seventh house but when venus enters the seventh house of a sign it does add abundance and beauty to the relationship so if you're a sagittarius that is open for love or if you're in a relationship you know there's going to be a lot of abundance and love and happiness added to those relationships you're going to be more attracting to those around you so that's something to look forward to and this is already kind of a fun energy for you because this is happening in your fifth house of pleasure, the whole Aries season. But then, you know, as we enter Taurus season, that's your sixth house. So that is going to have everything to do with your lifestyle. So health and the work that you do as far as service for others. And, you know, that's the house of Virgo service. So sixth house is, you know, more so of an earthly working house. So let's see here. We have all those retrogrades I mentioned. New moon in your fifth house of fun. Setting new intentions for pleasure. Setting new intentions for fun. Full moon in your 12th house though, Sagittarius. Well, we had a full moon in Libra, which was your 11th house last month. But as far as April goes, we have a Scorpio full moon in your 12th house on the, the end of this month on the 29th. So every time I talk to somebody, every time I talk to people about... 12th house moons, I definitely, definitely think it's important. Now, we have you here with the moon. This is your card in a different deck. Now, this is a beautiful temperance card. And we have you here, one foot in the emotion, one foot in the, you know, the temperance card always has one foot in the water and one foot not. Because this is balance. And this is patience. Okay, so we do have patience coming up here for you, Sagittarius, because the hanged man is, is about waiting and being patient waiting for things to get better, waiting to become enlightened, but completions and new beginnings, which brings up you leaving and going, coming and going, you know, the six of swords is all about getting to a better place emotionally, and we have the page of, page of uh, wands with the ten of swords, so there is some sort of completion happening for you, Sagittarius, and there's a new beginning of passion starting as well, but there, right behind you is the six of swords, so that tells me that your immediate energy this month is, you know, wanting to get more emotionally secure. Because, you know, you're leaving people, places, and things behind this month subconsciously um, to get to better a better foundation emotionally. So, you know, that might be why your foot is just kind of testing the waters right now. I mean, both of these temperances have their feet kind of testing the waters down there. So it's about grounding your emotions as well, Sagittarius. So let's get going on your reading. So Aries, Aries is the first house of self, and um, it has everything to do with who we are, who we identify as, the I am. So I'm going to get you a card, Sagittarius, and I'm going to put it right here, and it's going to be a representation of your energy this month in April. So let's get a card for Sagittarius. What is their main energy? One card for Sagittarius for April 2018. So we have the Two of Swords, and at the bottom of the deck, we have the Star card. So some of you are directly confused or at a crossroads 
in April about a, an Aquarius, or it could just be about your hopes and your wishes and your dreams. We did have the 11th house energy um, of Aquarius for you. Libra is your 11th house. So it, this is also another Libra card because, you know, a lot of people s see this as a Libra card because of the two swords there. It's kind of balanced, even though it's it's balanced, but confusing balanced. So there's some sort of hope that you're hanging on to. You know, you're hanging on to this hope in April, Sagittarius, and you're trying. This is two cups, just like the temperance. You're balancing it out. You know, this is your past and your future. So maybe you guys are confused about your past and your future. And we do have water here. And we do have you blindfolded. So Sagittarius is temporarily in April, you know, deciding, weighing their options out. You're at a crossroads just like Scorpio. Scorpio had the two of cups. So this is your overall energy, you know, mentally confused about a path to take. Mentally, can maybe you don't see your destiny right now, Sagittarius. We have the moon and the star there. So, you know, we'll go back to that energy and we'll see what that might mean. But for now, let's get your actual message for April. See what comes out for you, Sagittarius, for the month of April 2018. What is the message for Sagittarius's Sagi? So this is April 2018. April message for... Okay, so we have the Four of Pentacles twice. So the Four of Pentacles is, act is definitely a card that is involved in your reading. It's underneath this star card over here and it just came out in this deck as well so you might want to look up what that card means you might get some kind of message but for me it definitely means hanging on to something offering something that you don't really want to let go of attachment you know what i mean so we've got some messages coming out here for you sagittarius bottom of the deck right now is the sun card so definitely some Seeking out of happiness. Let's get one more card for Sagittarius. One more card, please, to symbolize the end of... And we have the Four of Wands pop out. So there is some sort of celebration. This can't went back in, though. So I'm going to let this go back in. But that was a message for some of you that you are like, there's some sort of marriage or relationship or celebration, birthday party. I don't know. I'm not sure. Let's see what this card is. The Three of Swords. Okay, so... We have the Three of Swords and the Nine of Swords at the bottom of the deck. Let me make sure none of these have turned over because we might have had another message in there for you. But I don't think so, Sagittarius. I think that was it. So bottom of the deck is the Nine of Swords, okay? Some of you, this could have something to do with a Libra because Libra had the Nine of Swords in their reading. And I really do feel the need to mention Libra. Libra is here, Libra. So let's break this down, Sagittarius, and see what kind of message is coming out for you guys. We know what your overall energy is, and now we've got the story behind why you're the Two of Swords, why you're confused about your destiny, or what way you should follow, or what path you should take. This has everything to do with some sort of path. So I think you're deciding between going forward to your future and going backwards in your past. We do have your ruling planet Jupiter retrograde, so that could be the push and the pull happening. Like, do I expand on my past? Do I expand on my future? So definitely some confusion there about your destiny, about your wishes. You're confused about a hope, hopeful situation. Maybe you're losing hope in a situation. But uh, let's let's go ahead and start here with this Four of Pentacles that came out for you. Because this Four of Pentacles is also over here. Let's see what's behind the Four of Pentacles. The Hierophant. So this is about a commitment. This is about learning. This is the High Priest. So, you know, this could be... You are the sign of learning, Sagittarius. So the universe could be asking you to learn from your attachments right now. Because you are attached to something. And it could be financial. This is you just really earning money. This is you wanting to hang on to the, the money that you do earn. Because this woman does... And the Gemini got this card too. So just be careful of earthly attachments. Because this is someone who's attached to something on earth. Sagittarius, you're, not a, you're half human, half God. So, you know, you are not meant to attach completely to earth. You also have a very mysterious element to you. So just be careful. There may be something that you're deciding between giving and keeping this month. Like, it could be finances. Some of you might be reevaluating the money that you're giving out. Now, we do have these three pinnacles on the ground here. So I am led to mention the three of pinnacles, which is work. This is teamwork. So some of you may be, you know, there could be three people or maybe two other people and you. So between all of you together, there's three three parties that you're working with, and you're really wanting to separate financially from those energies. Um, you could be offering 
something of value to somebody and just worried if they're not going to take it. So you're kind of hanging on to it really tightly. There's something you're hanging on to in April. And it could be something, it might not be financial. It could be, you could be trying to penny pinch so that you can get a new house or that so that you can get something that's going to be more better for you emotionally. Because we have the Ten of Cups underneath the Four of Pentacles. So some of you are holding on to something emotionally this month. It could be because you're trying to financially support your children. Some of you are, it's, it's a matter of putting bread on the table and heat. So your bills, you know, family life is coming up here. Some of you are just trying to really penny pinch so that you can support your family right now. But you also have your own hopes and wishes on the table. So it could be some deciding between something for you and others. So now we have the Page of Wands, which is a new creative beginning. I don't know if some of you are painters or artists or if you write creatively or if you do something that's creatively or magical. But this is a manifestation. Okay, every page comes with a message. So this is some this is you creating your own message, Sagittarius. You are painting a picture right now. You have temporarily laid down that page of wands, but this is about you starting a new creative, passionate journey, okay? And you know, you might ha you might be holding on to finances because of this new fire journey, but this is your energy, the page of wands. So there is something that you're trying to create right now, and it could be the finances. You know, as far as what this means to you intuitively, it's up to you. But it could have to do with some sort of new love offer or, you know, some sort of financial offer. Because we do have a coin being offered here. So some of you might have jobs to choose between or money to choose between, financial opportunities, some sort of decision financially to make. And this, this financial decision... Or working together, because this is the Four of Pentacles, with the Three of Pentacles down there. So not necessarily working together, but hanging on to the money that you've made in the business that you own. Hanging on to your own values. Some of you are really hanging on to your own value, which I'm not going to say is a bad thing. This coin in this woman's hand represents not only money, but it represents Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, Earth, logic, realistic, your reality, something that you can touch, see, and feel. So you're holding, you're holding something in your hand this month, Sagittarius, that you value. This could be a diamond for some of you. This could be a baby for some of you. This could be a pet or, you know, something that literally is valuable to you. That's not always money. Sometimes people value you know, clothes and shit. So whatever, just think of something in your hand that you're holding on tightly to that you value, that you're not willing to give up yet. Okay, and it, for you, some of you, this is your creativity. It's some of you, it's your very fire and passion. Some of you are painting passionately this month. You're you're the artist of your own story. You have the, the page of wands. Now, this could be a new passionate beginning with a water sign because after that, we do have the page, the fucking knight of cups. So this is someone coming in this month. This could be you, Sagittarius, or somebody else that is really coming in, um, offering you a cup of water. Now, you want to know something really, really weird, Sagittarius, is I've got my dog down here in his bed, and I'm talking about this cup, right? And I had a cup of water down there, and I kid you not, it just spilled over. That's why I just got all weird, because my cup of water just spilled out. So some of you... This is really about emotions for some of you. And for others of you, this is some kind of water energy. Something might be spilling out this month. I'm not sure, you guys. But I just thought it was weird that I was talking about a, a cup being offered. And then my cup of water literally spilled over. And I'm a Pisces. So it could be a Pisces for some of you. Some of Somebody could be pouring their emotions out to you like, Sagittarius, I just really want you back. I love you so much. Or Sagittarius, I just have liked you for so long. So just be prepared for somebody to offer their emotions to you this month in April. And also, this could be you offering your emotions. But this is um, emotional action. I mean, so much so that my cup of water in my life just spilled over for you simultaneously as I'm talking about this night. Now, all I've been talking about this night this month during these readings. And you just want to be careful, Sagittarius, of this knight because it, he's not like the Knight of Pentacles. I love the Knight of Cups. I love water energy. But, you know, it's a little bit difficult to carry a cup of water on the back of a horse. Some of it's going to spill out, right? I'm tripping because this water literally is spilled on my floor right now and I'm just ignoring it. But I feel that that happened for a reason. You know, your emotions could spill over this month because of some sort of new love. This is new love coming in. 
somebody offering you an emotion. This could be an emotional job. It doesn't have to be a love partner, but this is something coming in emotionally for you. It's time to show emotional action towards this new passionate creative journey. And some of you, this is going to spark creativity in you, but I do see some sort of figure charging in this month in April with emotion. This could just be you gaining emotional clarity. This is you showing emotional action towards a person, place, or thing. And right after that Knight of Cups, we have the Ten of Cups. So, you know, this person may offer you a happy home. They may offer you a happy family life. You know, I don't know if you're this woman or if this woman is offering you this cup and she has a couple kids. Some of you may be with people with kids. Some of you may have children or just younger people. Now, this doesn't have to be your children. This could be your siblings or a best friend's children. So whatever this means to you, we do have the fire back there. So I'm seeing your energy. This is complete happiness, Sagittarius. Somebody is coming in. And they, you can see yourself happy with them. You can see yourself married to them. You can see yourself with kids. Maybe they already have kids. Maybe they have pets that they act. That, that some of us, our pets are our children, like me. I don't have any kids, but my dog, my chihuahua down here is my little baby. Okay, so this is about, you know, food being on the table, heat being on, spending some time next to the fi the bonfire or the the camp, the fucking camp. Uh, fireplace all right and this is you with passionate emotion this is the ten of cups so some of you are even hanging on to this ten of cups because we have the four of pentacles some of you are hanging on to the to to hope because we have the four of pentacles over here too could have to do with the taurus energy all right but i think i think that you're just hanging on to your own wishes and your own you know your what you see for your future the hope that you have for your future the healing that you're hanging on to this. This is the four of cup, four of pentacles, and this is the four of pentacles. So we have both women and men, Sagittarius, is masculine and feminine, hanging on to something. And now this is telling me that you're hanging on to either an Aquarius energy, or a hopeful, wishful energy. And you're hanging on to this commitment with this sign. But some of you could be walking away from that commitment too, because we have the eight of cups down there. No wonder you're kind of confused because you're confused whether you should stay and keep hope or leave because your heart's broken and because it's no longer serving you emotionally some of you are going to smack this cup right out of this knight's hand like fuck your cup dude it ain't it's poison that ain't emotion you're offering me poison right now this ain't romeo and juliet i'm not about to drink poison for your bitch ass like so you know you guys are over being emotionally played and you're over being heartbroken some of you, I, I'm confused. I'm literally confused with this reading because we have the Knight of Cups bringing in the Ten of Cups, but beneath the Knight of Cups, we have the fucking Three of Swords. So I don't know. You guys want to be careful because this Knight might look good, and this could be any Zodiac sign. It doesn't have to be a water sign. This is something that you had faith in, that you, hang, you hung on to. And... It wound up getting tipped over. And I, it's funny. I've been saying that all month. Like, don't trust the Knight of Cups. He gives people drinks of his cup on the way to you. And then, you know, like, I don't mean to, like, I don't know why I'm talking about the Knight of Cups like that this month. Probably because we're all in our feelings, you know, especially with this Scorpio full moon in your 12th house. You're going to be in your feelings. Now, if this is you offering, like, I literally see the Knight of Cups charging forward to the Page of Wands. That's you. This is you minding your own business, painting a picture, and someone saying, hey, I really like the way that you're painting that picture. Here's my emotions on the table. I'm going to pour my heart out to you. So this is pouring your heart out to somebody about a heartbreak. Some of the, Somebody could have broke your heart in the past, and you could just be really, you know, maybe this person's coming back. Maybe you broke someone's heart and you're going back to them, but this is a third-party situation. So now we have the Three of Swords, and then we have the, the these three pinnacles on the ground. So some of you are taking your value back from a third party situation like I value myself too much. I'm not going to offer you a coin just because you're offering me a cup. What I'm offering you is more realistic and you can't even hold your own. And then here you are, Sagittarius, right in the middle of this night in this four of pentacles. So somebody could be hanging on to you too and not letting your ass go. Maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe you are more than willing to get go, but this person is like, no, Sagittarius, you're my ten of cups. And you're like, eh, I'm just minding my own now. Like, I've already dealt with this heartbreak. I healed from you. This is healing. 
So there's a there's a crossroads of healing that you've reached, Sagittarius. Like either way, either road you choose, it's gonna be a healing adventure for you. But you want to be careful and choose for yourself because you don't want to travel backwards on the journey of, to healing because that's traveling backwards to pain. And we do end the month here with the Three of Swords with you. I don't think this is you heartbroken. I honestly think that you break someone else's heart because we have this woman here crying in this garden. And this is right underneath the Knight of Cups. So there's some sort of heartbreak attached to this new love offer. Maybe you're just not ready yet. Maybe you're focused on your complete happiness and not just happiness with one person. Maybe you have several different people to choose from, Sagittarius, and you just don't even know. Like, you're just kind of blindfolding yourself completely. You're like, I don't want to see any of you guys. Like, I'm doing me. Let me just sit here for a while. Like, come on. So after the Ten of Cups, we have the Moon. So this is the Pisces card. Some of you may be with a Pisces. There's two Pisces energies in this card, in this, in this reading. There's the Knight of Cups and the Moon. And they're both, there's one that's underneath you, Sagittarius, and there's one that's coming towards you. So there could be a Pisces from your past or a new Pisces coming in or just someone Pisces-like, which is someone, you know, you know, maybe some of you know what Pisces energy feels like. It feels a lot like these Ten of Cups. Pisces are very emotional people. They're ruled by Jupiter too. So Sagittarius and Pisces are a very expansive couple, but you might turn this Pisces down um, but I'm not going to get too caught up on the Pisces energy because it doesn't have to be a Pisces. It could just be someone who's really spiritual coming into your life or someone who's very emotional coming into your life. Um, so we do have the Ten of Cups, the Pisces card, the Pi Ten of Cups, the Moon, and the Three of Swords. So I'm feeling here that there's a lot to do with your emotions. So this is not just Pisces Cancer. This is also the Moon happening at the end of the month in Scorpio. This is your 12th house moon. So there is an emotional completion happening with you during this moon, Sagittarius. I mean, the moon symbolizes our emotion. The moon symbolizes our soul. And then the 10, the 10 of cups is the 10 of emotion, the completion of emotion. So you are going through an emotional completion. All your emotions are going to dump out like my cup did. And you're being asked to reflect. You know, this is someone who's reflecting on their, their image. This is that big full moon there. And then we have your energy here, this this candle. So you want to reflect on your own inner light this month, Sagittarius. And, you know, you may be contacting people from your past. People from your past may be calling on you. Because we have this part of you that is... God, these women look different. This is an older... This part is dying. This is a part of this woman that is dying. And the moon is showing you that. So there's a, this is your emotional self. You're going to be born anew. You're saying goodbye to somebody this month, and it could be your own reflection. You are going through a death and a transformation, Sagittarius, because Scorpio is your 12th house. So this is a subconscious transformation. Your subconscious is being reborn. So that's good because some things are occupying your subconscious that you don't want to occupy your subconscious anymore, which is this Three of Swords. So this is, this is a subconscious heartbreak. This is... A hidden heartbreak some of you may be secretly heartbroken because we have the moon here which is a secretive energy and Scorpio is also a very secretive moon energy so this is literally the Scorpio full moon and we have that with the three of swords so some of you are heartbroken under the surface some of you are soul is broken and you need to communicate from your heart that's what the three of swords is talking about communicating with somebody you might need to have a tough third party discussion with somebody like look I can't do this anymore I value myself too much to do this with you. You're not my Ten of Cups. Secretly, I have the Ten of Cups with someone else. Like, I can have the Ten of Cups on my own. So you might leave somebody in tears. Either you or somebody else is heartbroken in April. And there could be a secret third-party situation. Some of you might have someone else on the side. Some of you, there's a, there's a heartbreak with a Pisces coming up. Because we have this heartbreak with a Pisces here and a Pisces here. So some of you are really reflecting on past pain with a Pisces or something like that. I do see heartbreak with a Pisces. Bottom of the deck is the Nine of Swords with the Eight of Cups with the Six of Pentacles. So it's about balancing here the give and the take. So this card reminds me, you see here, this woman is receiving a coin. So it's about getting as much as you get in return. Like make sure that people are valuing you, Sagittarius. And there's a lot of children here. So I do see children. So there's a need to financially support for the Sagittariuses that are parents. 
There's a need to financially support your children right now. And some of you have a distracting love offer coming in and you're like, look, I'm focused on my own home right now, bitch. Like, so this is interesting that you're, this woman is getting a coin from this little kid. And then in this card, the four of pentacles, the woman is barely, barely releasing that coin. So we've got some children here. We've got the Libra energy up here balancing. So make sure that the give and the take is balanced. Make sure that you're being valued and that you're valuing others. Now this could have something to do with victory or a cancer. Because now we have the chariot, very fast movement. So your world is changing very fast, Sagittarius, and energy might start going all over the place before you take this risk um, in a new beginning. And then you have the magician and the hierophant and the six of cups and the ace of cups. So you, you are going to make a decision. Your soulmate is coming in and you're manifesting right now a new journey. But first, you've got to get all these energies going in the right direction. You've got to start, you got to take this completion. The world is a completion. You're up to your neck in emotion right now, and you need to charge forward towards your path. Because we see this chariot really, so I don't know if it's a cancer for some of you, but I do see that you're kind of emo you're kind of up in your head about this emotional confusion. Maybe there's, you know, and here's this cup again. We have this cup. You really do care right now about your own emotional value. And that might be what it is. You might be in the middle of emotional value right now and someone who's not valuing your emotion or valuing you the way that you feel. So if that's the person offering you a cup, you're going to smack that cup right out of their hand. And you might be secretly heartbroken. Sagittarius, you might, you might decline an offer that you've been waiting for for a really long time. And that's why you're confused because it's like, man, I used to want this so badly. And I denied this and now I'm stuck alone in bed at night in my head thinking about the what ifs woulda coulda shoulda woulda couldas you know but you didn't want to just you were tired of seeing only seeing you know instead of believing you need to see and believe as a Sagittarius so there's some kind of emotional confusion that has got you guys can't sleep at night insomnia uh, mental anxiety but you are gonna gain victory over this Sagittarius you are okay Nine of, this nine of swords is your is your underlying energy for this whole reading so you could be hanging on to something that causes you mental anxiety but you could be you know starting to come out of that starting to express yourself um, with this page of wands a new journey fire and when you find that fire that's when this love is going to try to off it like as soon as Sagittarius starts feeling good and your fire can be felt from people around you. So when Sagittarius takes on this page of wands energy, it looks good, it feels good, it's sexy and attractive. And so, yeah, the people are going to start coming. The offers are going to start coming to you. And they're emotional offers, but I just don't know your feelings towards that. You know, you, you're you focused on this Ten of Cups, kind of. Hang, you're hanging on to that energy. That's your, you're keeping the faith in this happy home environment. But you're also confused emotionally about this. And then there is this very secretive, behind-the-scenes, soul work energy going on here with you, Sagittarius. We have Sag and Pisces right next to each other. And then this heartbreak and energy. I don't know if this is a home that gets broken up or if you break up with somebody. But we do end the month here with some sort of three of swords. And I really don't feel like it's you, Sagittarius. I feel like you break the heart of someone else. But, you know, when someone's heart breaks, the other part, her person's heart breaks too. So, I don't know, this is you speaking from the heart, and you could be really expressing yourself emotionally to somebody, and it might not be in the best of way, it could be in a way where you're like, look, I love you and everything, but this just isn't working out. Like I said, you could have a secret, I don't know if a third party situation is being kept from you, or if you're keeping a third party situation away from someone else, but this is happening under the surface, that Scorpio full moon is going to amplify these energies so as far as that three of swords sagittarius that might be why you know you're feeling see no one knows that you're up at night like this you see the light in the dark here that's on that card there the light is shining in so you're becoming aware of this pain you're becoming aware of this mental energy but that three of swords is interesting to me somebody is left crying you a river and i hope it ain't you sagittarius i think that you're the one walking away this month Okay, and you know, it's interesting that we have your energy as the two of swords this month. So there is a decision that you need to make and you're blinding yourself to this emotion now. But you know, it's still there Sagittarius and there is a decision that you need to see clearly. 
because we do have you blindfolded here. You're not wanting to make this decision, but either way, you're being kept up at, at night over it. So definitely embodying a two of swords energy. So mental, this is you embodying a very mentally confused energy. And we have the star card, the four of pentacles, the hierophant, and the eight of cups. The king of pentacles with the ten of swords. So maybe some of you, this could be a Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Or a Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. Because we have the king of cups and the king of pentacles with the ten of swords in the middle. And then the seven of swords with the page of cups. So pay attention to the synchronicities happening under the surface, Sagittarius. Because there could be some secret betrayal going on between you or another person. But you're just focused on your future. And now we have the Page of Wands coming out again. Okay, you, you definitely have a lot of fire energy. These are all fire energies, the Ten of Wands. So there's a fiery burden. And, you know, there's even this energy here that you're going to gain victory over, okay? So left out in the cold, here's the Nine of, the nine of Swords again. So the reason why you're feeling like the Nine of Swords is because you feel financially left out in the cold. That's why you're hanging on to every little bit of coin that you can. Making sure you're keeping track of your offers. But, I mean, you are definitely feeling this Aries energy. Because we have the King of Wands, the Three of Wands, the Page of Wands, and the Ten of Wands. So definitely a fiery energy. But I am led to tell you that there could be a Pisces really offering a, a cup of love to you this month. Because I have the Moon card. So it's either Pisces or Cancer or some kind of energy like that. Um, but pay attention to the synchronicities. Because this is attached to the Seven of Swords. So if some of you are sneaking off in the dark with a third party situation under the sun or under the moon, we have the moon and the sun here together. So what's done in the dark will come to the light. This is a secret love and it's hooked with the Seven of Swords. So this is either you, Sagittarius, or someone with you doing this to you. Now remember, we have that this same energy over here, right here. So be careful of a sneaky... I don't know if it's a sneaky Pisces. I just think this Pisces is offering you love. Because we have two Pisces cards. But you might decline this Pisces. I'm not sure. You might be worried about... They might have done this to you in the past. So you're like, uh-uh, bitch. I know how secretive you are. Sagittarius knows Pisces energy a lot. Because we're both ruled by Jupiter. So I don't know. Just be careful of things happening under the surface. Pay attention to the synchronicities. And look, we have a fish here. So you guys could be communicating with a Pisces this month. Um, really, you know, this is you. Maybe a Pisces is going to help you see the light or something like that. Of the energies that are sneaking. You guys, I think you're getting, going away with a Pisces or something. I don't know. You guys are going to have to help me. Because this energy seems very hidden and there's a secret attached to a Pisces this month and it is attached to doing something this is a thief energy this is somebody doing something thinking they're getting away with it so it could be a third party situation now look we have those two swords right here in the ground so you might this is you being confused right here remember this two of swords up here so there's two swords in the ground right here and so while you're sitting there confused about something secretive or something under the surface Someone else is getting away with something. So just be careful. And so going back to this energy here, we have the the star card. Underneath that was the Four of Pentacles. So the reason why the Four of Pentacles is in your reading is because you're hanging on to something that you, you still have hope in. You still have faith in it. This is your dreams, your goals. It could be an Aquarius. It could be hanging on to certain groups or friends or something like that. But it's your past and your future. That's why she's pouring between those two cups. So... You do need to allow emotion in to help you with this decision, which might be why a Pisces might can help you. Some of you are directly involved with Pisces. Okay. Some of you are going through pain, emotional pain with a Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo still, but this is a pain that's completing. And you're confused because this pain is over with. So it's either a Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, or a Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Someone with those energies in their chart. I'm not sure, but we have the Ten of Swords down there with the Nine of Swords. So, you know, you move from being, you're over, this is when you stop getting, being in your head about it, Sagittarius. And that's when you just allow the pain to, to just take it, take place. There's pain here too. And so you need to learn, it could be a Taurus, I see Taurus, Aquarius, Pisces, but it could be any sign. Now this is my card for Scorpio full moon this month. So this moon is going to have you walking away from emotional situations. Could be walking away from a Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. Could be walking away from an emotional situation with an earth sign, 
Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo. But, um, you know, you're going to be learn. You're learning. This is something that you're learning spiritually this month. Okay, and it could be a commitment, like you could be walking away from a commitment, walking away from emotional commitments this month. And you were, you started off hanging on to this energy, but by the end of the month, you could be walking away from a Taurus or walking away from a commitment because Taurus, this card is the commitment marriage card. So some of you could be walking away. That could mean divorce for some of you or just breakups because we do have breakups on the table, guys. So, you know... This is, the worst is over, Sagittarius. You know, we move from this energy to the Ace of Swords. And I do see a significant, some of you may have water energy or earth energy, but this is grounded emotion. Make sure that you're being logical and emotional. So that's a little bit more about that star card and about that four of pentacles and why it is that you are the two of swords this month. So you got a decision to make. It could be a love decision. It could be a work decision. But it's all happening under the surface, Sagittarius. And I feel that you need to reflect this month. Okay? On these love offers, on your emotional contentment, on this heartbreaking decision. Okay? I'm really wondering here what's going on with this three of swords. Either a third party situation that you no longer value or that you're no longer valued in. Somebody gets their heart broke, though. And it could just be because sometimes we feel this way when somebody says something to us that we don't want to hear or when we say something to someone else that we don't want to say. It's hard to say it, but either way, it came from the heart. So make sure you stay in your heart space, Sagittarius. And if you are a, bro a broken-hearted Sagittarius or if you're dealing with a third-party situation that's kind of breaking your heart into three pieces, there's like these three swords stuck in your heart. So you need to use those swords to communicate. Especially when we have when when this energy moves into your eighth house of Taurus. I'm sorry. Sixth house of Taurus. Sorry. So we have that twelfth house full moon really adding some energy this month, Sagittarius. So on the 29th, it could be a very emotional day for you. You need to use that to reflect on your pain. Okay, we do have Chiron moving into Aries this month, so you might want to really reflect on your own strength and, and what it is that causes you secret pain because there is a secret heartbreak here there's a heartbreak happening under the surface that nobody may know about it could be you or another person and you know this is aquarius is your third house so this does have a lot to do with heartbreaking communication so this star card could symbolize your third house of communication and then we have the third house of communication here, symbolized by communication in those three swords. So there could be, you could be talking to three different people or two different people. There's a three-way, there's a communication that needs to take apart three ways. So don't forget that we're, we're working, for the first half of April, we're working with your 12th and your 6th house of uh, Libra and Aries. And then we move to the, we move to... Your 12th. So first it's your 11th house and your 4th house. I'm sorry, your 11th house and your 5th house. So Libra is your 11th house, Aries is your 5th house. Sorry, guys. First half of the month is 11th house, Libra, groups, friends, wishes, goals, okay? So the 11th house is coming up here for you, but also the 3rd house, also the 5th house and the 6th house. So at the end of the month, these energies move from your 11th and 5th house to your 12th and 6th house, which is Scorpio and Taurus. So at the end of April, you're focused on your subconscious, your spirituality, your, he your health, your lifestyle, and the work that you do. So it's funny because that kind of showed up in your reading. So hopefully this was helpful for you, Sagittarius. You know, you are at a crossroads when it comes, you're at a crossroads and this crossroads was destined. Like the stars led you here. The moon is leading you here. So make sure you don't keep that blindfold on for too long. Make sure you're, you're seeing and believing. It's important. Sagittarius is the sign of sight and vision. So it, there are certain dangerous energies that take place when Sagittarius blinds their self. Because you can't learn if you can't see. And you are the house of higher learning. So in order to expand, you have to see. You know, seeing is believing when it comes to a Sagittarius. So make sure that you are 
aware and that you're woke and that you're focusing on what it is that's going on in your life, okay? Because there are certain things that you need to go under the surface to see. So maybe you're blinding yourself to your own reflection or something. But you're not, you're no dummy, Sagittarius. You're very intellectual, one of the smartest zodiac signs. I know it can be tough being at a crossroads, you know, of faith. But keep the faith because there's going to be something that opens up. You move from the Two of Swords to the to the Three of Swords. Maybe you need to meditate on the Four of Swords, okay? But you are you are moving up, and I do see progress. And you know, you are going to be vict victorious. There might be some kind of message coming in. I do see here's that Ace of Swords with the Sagittarius card. So I can't make this up, you guys. I just opened my deck to the Ace of Swords with Sagittarius. What did I tell you? After the Ten of Swords, you get the Ace of Swords. So this is about communication for you, communicating about a decision you have to make, speaking your truth, Sagittarius, speaking your balanced, peaceful, fair truth, especially around that full moon. You know, you need to communicate about what, what it is that you feel and see and about your, the completions that you're going through. There is love coming for you, though. And I'm going to leave these two cards out because I love that for you. The Ace of Swords for Sagittarius. So you can use this Ace of Swords. Just choose one. You're going to choose one of these swords, and you're going to use that sword to cut your way to clarity. You're going to use that sword to cut away through mental anxiety and emotional confusion. So, all right, Sagittarius. That's what I have for you this month in April. Hopefully you enjoy the rest of the month and enjoy speaking that truth. Enjoy that mental clarity that the, the moon is going to give to you, okay? And uh, you're even going to gain clarity. You may choose this, this sword right here in the middle of your heart. But you're going to choose one. You're going to choose one of these options and you're going to use it to the best of your advantage. So happy April, you guys. Happy spring. Um, happy full moon in Scorpio. And I will talk to you guys around this time in Taurus season. Bye, Sag.